Mr. President, the challenges of the ongoing war in Afghanistan are immense. But Americans believe in the mission. And they trust the advice of our commanders in the field to see that mission through. So I support the President's decision to follow the advice of General Petraeus and General McChrystal in ordering the same kind of surge in Afghanistan that helped turn the tide in Iraq. These additional forces will support a counterinsurgency strategy that will enable us to begin the difficult work of reversing the momentum of the Taliban and keeping it from power. The President is right to follow the advice of the generals in increasing troops. And he is also right to focus on increasing the ability of the Afghan security forces so they can protect the people. By doing both, he's made it possible for our forces to create the right conditions for Afghanistan, the right conditions for them to defend themselves, create a responsible government, and remain an ally in the war on terror. Although our forces are in Afghanistan to defend our security interests, the people of Afghanistan must assume a greater burden in the future. The President's plan recognizes that. Once we achieve our objectives, an Afghanistan that can defend itself, govern itself, control its borders, and remain an ally in the war on terror, then we can reasonably discuss withdrawal, a withdrawal based on conditions, not arbitrary timelines. But for now, we owe it to the American people, to those who died on 9-11, and to the many brave Americans who have already died on distant battlefields in this long and difficult struggle, to make sure that Afghanistan never again serves as a sanctuary for al-Qaeda. And we owe it to the men and women who are now deployed, or who will soon be deployed, to provide every resource they need to prevail. Now, Mr.